uh, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Catalin Corolaro, and I'm really, really honored to be uh, here today to the last 20th anniversary uh, because it's it's uh, astonishing what the VASP did in the last 20 years and contributed a lot uh, to secure the world uh, and to get to get uh, to the same place. Uh, very, very smart people that uh, have the same uh, the same aim. Uh, today, I'll talk a little bit about cyber intelligence, how you can consolidate uh, uh, a company with, uh, with the CTI. Uh, and uh, in, in the context of, uh, of, of course, of the applications. Uh, but for, first of all, who I am? I'm uh, Katarin Corolaru. I'm a uh, security operations manager at uh, Visma. Um, as areas of competences, I work between security operations, uh, security incident response and management, uh, product security, uh, DUST, and uh, CTI, of course. Um, so uh, besides that, I'm also the chapter leader of Vasti Mishora. Um, yeah, where when I try to create a community around it, uh, and um, uh, the main uh, the main background that I have it's uh, in the networking and uh, sysadmin guy. Uh, after I joined the forces uh, in the security, so I'm also passionate about uh, hiking, biking, and uh, football. So. Cyber threat intelligence, what uh, it is and uh, why uh, should someone uh, uh, need it yeah, inside uh, the company and especially for the applications. And uh, after that, in the second uh, part of the talk, uh, I'll give you a couple of insights uh, on our vision and what we did to uh, protect the applications and also the company. Uh, and the companies that we have in Visma. Because uh, Visma in a nutshell, it's uh, a conglomerate, it's a company of companies. Uh, so we are present in the more than uh, 37 uh, countries, 37 offices. And we have lots of uh, uh, companies, more than 130. Um, we also have lots of development teams, uh, over uh, 5K developers and lots of lines of code. Uh, and uh, on top of that, we have around uh, 30 acquisitions per year. So you can imagine the challenge. Uh, it's, uh, it's challenging. Uh, it's uh, something that uh, we are quite enjoying because it's, uh, it's fun in the same time. Because in order to, to deliver good products and uh, security into those products, we, uh, we deliver also uh, all the uh, areas like uh, training and awareness, asset management, uh, security risk management, uh, code scanning. Uh, we are offering also software composition analysis, uh, pen test. We have a dedicated uh, pen test team that uh, it's doing uh, day by day uh, and it's validating the applications that uh, they do not have uh, issues. Uh, also, we have log management, uh, bug bounty areas, and uh, responsible disclosure, and of course, cyber threat intelligence. So lots of things. And uh, the cherry on the cake, it's the gamified uh, governance uh, UI, uh, web UI, uh, which is a, uh, an application, uh, an index that provides a maturity of that application in terms of security. So it's it's quite a gamified approach to, to security. So cyber threat intelligence, what it is and why we actually need it. Uh, those are two good questions uh, because uh, there are lots of buzzwords with uh, the cyber threat intel or at least with threat intel. Uh, you can go uh, in lots of directions, lots of uh, use cases, because uh, we can see lots of uh, distinctions uh, between types of uh, source intelligence, between um, types of threat intelligence, and so on. So what, uh, what actually is uh, cyber threat intelligence? Uh, first of all, it's, it's knowledge. Uh, if you get uh, raw data from different sources, uh, and you analyze that data, uh, providing a context, 
you will uh, know exactly uh, how to prevent, mitigate, and uh, you will know exactly uh, who is attacking you. So what are their motivations? What are their um, tactics, techniques, and procedures, or the modus operandi? Uh, and also what indicators of compromise they are using? And you will know uh, as a security professional or uh, as a developer uh, to look for patterns uh, or for deviations. And those deviations will help you uh, figure out if uh, there are attacks against uh, your product or not against your company. So uh, with threat intelligence also, uh, we can have uh, uh, informed decisions from the strategic point of view, uh, especially in the context or in the realm of m &A. If uh, you're buying a company, you definitely would like to know uh, what, will, what a security landscape does that company have? Uh, it, does it suffer the, any uh, breach in the past? Uh, do they know uh, that breach? Are they aware that uh, they were hacked in the past? So with the uh, cyber threat intelligence, you can do that. Um, also, uh, one uh, another, another approach is to have an action-oriented approach about existing and emerging threats. Uh, so uh, do you think that it's a Sherlock Holmes job? Uh, depends on, uh, on the use cases and depends on... Um, uh, what you're after. Uh, it sounds like a Hollywood, right? Uh, track actors uh, usually say that I'm in. Uh, you remember the Kaiseya uh, when they said, yes, I'm in. And um, it was quite, uh, quite a noisy uh, week, that week. So uh, yeah, what, what is actually the reality? Uh, the reality is that uh, we, we can see um, a modus operandi that is always changing. We can see that the cyber attacks are constant. It's not, not a matter uh, if you will be hacked, it's a matter that when you'll be hacked. Uh, but uh, if you'll be hacked, you need to consider to be transparent. Uh, that's uh, what the companies need to do, uh, to put everything on the table and uh, be transparent and collaborate with the rest. Because that's uh, one important key in, um, in threat intelligence to collaborate and share uh, the findings that you have. Because in this way, we can protect. And uh, that's uh, also what OVAS did, uh, because everyone wanted to contribute and to collaborate uh, in, the, in the community. Uh, one of the important uh, uh, pictures that uh, I've seen, it's, it's, it's about uh, how cyber threat intelligence can uh, map different sources. So threat intelligence is used usually uh, uh, in in different ways, uh, in different ways uh, that and uh, what are the drivers of success? Uh, I would say that uh, uh, depends on each uh, use case. I believe the cyber threat intelligence uh, as a way to bring value, uh, explain complex things, help forecast uh, the next incident. Uh, um, that you'll have, and even provide an attacker's name to the management when, of course, uh, you're asked. Uh, that's why cyber threat intelligence could help you uh, with that. So uh, the life cycle uh, of the of the CTI. So how does uh, the cyber threat intelligence uh, get produced? Raw data, uh, as I said, is not the same as intelligence. So cyber threat intelligence uh, is the finished product. Uh, that comes out of six uh, part of uh, data collection, processing, and analysis. Uh, this process is um, a cycle uh, because uh, new questions and gaps in knowledge are identified uh, during the course of uh, developing uh, intelligence, leading uh, to new collection uh, requirements uh, being set. So an effective, an effective uh, intelligence program is uh, iterative. Uh, becoming more refined over time. So feedback, I would say that it's uh, it's the key. Uh, types of uh, threat intelligence, uh, as demonstrated, um, uh, as demonstrated uh, by threat intelligence lifecycle, uh, the final product will look different depending on the intel initial uh, intelligence requirements. Uh, sources of information, 
and uh, intended audience. Uh, it uh, can uh, be helpful to break down the threat intelligence into a few categories, like uh, like the strategic, uh, tactical, and uh, operational. Uh, of course, we can go further uh, with other categories, types, uh, but we will not get into the details because uh, we, we have uh, a time limit today. Uh, but if you're a little Sherlock Holmes, you can uh, find more about uh, the types and the distinctions between uh, types of threat intelligence. Um, so this is another, this is, uh, I would say, an oversimplification of the types of the CTI. In reality, the implementation of uh, these types may vary per organization. So why, why we need it? Um, uh, I think that all, all of you remember the dependency of confusion. We had quite a good uh, time at uh, that moment. Um, so of course, uh, Nation states, uh, organized crime, uh, hacktivists uh, are uh, are there, but uh, uh, that was on the on the solar winds. Uh, on the dependency confusion, it was uh, a feeling that okay, it's just maybe another write up of uh, bug bounty stuff. But uh, still remember uh, that evening. It was around uh, 11 p.m. my time when I first read it and, uh, of course, shared the, the information internally uh, on the Slack channel and uh, on various uh, places. Uh, and next, uh, I didn't realize at that moment how uh, important it was, but next uh, next day in the morning, one of my colleagues that is, uh, uh, is managing the bug bounty program uh, took care of it and uh, uh, started the alarm. And uh, in just a couple of hours, we developed uh, a tool that uh, checked if the components were uh, vulnerable or not. So uh, yeah. Threat intelligence, it's a good, con it's, it's a good, um, uh, it's, it's a strength to have it and to share that information uh, through the uh, process to threat intelligence. Um, another case uh, that uh, it's, it makes a reasoning why I need it. So Visma a couple of years ago was, uh, was hacked. Uh, there is a really good uh, walkthrough report from Recover Future uh, detailing exactly what the APT10 did, how they did it. So it's uh, it's a good uh, uh, it's a good uh, walkthrough with lots of IOCs and lots of technical, but also uh, high level stuff that you will want to find. Uh, so if you want to to learn more how to protect uh, from uh, nation states. And yeah, just have a, have a, have a read, and uh, of course, uh, another why it's uh, the uh, perpetuum mobile like ransom uh, uh, gangs, uh, and that effect that the cyber crime uh, will uh, develop. Uh, year by year, uh, because uh, in um, uh, I've seen a report that in just a couple of years, uh, they will overpass the drug, uh, uh, the drug uh, crime. So we need to, to be prepared and to strengthen uh, our security. So a couple of insights, what we actually did uh, internally uh, through the CTI. Uh, first of all, before um, having uh, a CTI uh, in place or, or having uh, everything properly, we developed uh, what we think one of the most advanced security programs uh, because uh, for security, um, we do everything from source code analysis to bug bounty to writing police reports uh, and, uh, of course, catching criminals. Uh, and for all of this, we need uh, actionable intelligence. So also we are very careful about the privacy and uh, of course, transparency uh, is a key. Like uh, I've already told you about uh, how this model was hacked in 2018. So uh, we transparently told uh, the story to the world and Reuters reported it. So we developed also uh, internally a, a program for the CTI, uh, I, will more I will be more concentrated on the monitoring part, the operational part, because there are the different uh, areas, uh, monitoring and operational, uh, the strategical and tactical one. On the strategical one, I want to mention uh, shortly the uh, reports that we are doing uh, by on-demand. Uh, 
and uh, with that also for the MAs. Uh, in case that we want to buy a company, we are doing a um, cyber threat intelligence report uh, against that company. Uh, and we are scrapping everything to see uh, if the, the company was hacked, um, if uh, they had some um, credentials compromised and so on. Uh, but I'll concentrate more on about the operational part uh, where we are concentrated on uh, uh, payment fraud. So there we have uh, a monitoring uh, where we have monitoring for sources like uh, uh, criminal communities, pay sites, and other forums for relevant uh, uh, payment card numbers, bank identifiers, or uh, either specific um, references uh, to financial institutions or to us. Um, and also we are concentrating on uh, compromised data like uh, uh, because criminals regularly uh, upload massive caches of uh, usernames, passwords to pay sites uh, or to dark, dark web uh, places, marketplaces, uh, and uh, make them available for sale on underground places. And uh, we are monitoring these uh, sources with threat intelligence and uh, watch out for any leak uh, credential, uh, corporate data, or uh, either proprietary uh, code. Also, we are going uh, into the typo squatting because we want to get real time alerts on the newly registered uh, phishing uh, and typo squatting domains to prevent the cyber criminals uh, from uh, impersonating and defrauding uh, unsuspecting users. So uh, what actually we did, uh, we um, uh, developed the CTI as a core. Uh, we did uh, a surveillance of, say like that, of your application because we wanted to know exactly what application it's using uh, for the technology stack, for the um, uh, technology partners in case that uh, you are using a third party or you have a partner that is having a uh, zero day uh, exploit. Uh, do you want to know if uh, a partner has uh, zero day? Definitely, yes. So with, with threat intelligence, we need to be really fast in these cases. Also, uh, in case that someone is, uh, is bragging on social media about uh, having an exploit, or uh, it's wanting uh, uh, to, uh, yeah, to get uh, your company uh, name or reputation uh, to not so good places, uh, then uh, we we are monitoring that. So what uh, what actually we did? Uh, we uh, get uh, uh, deeper into the application. So we started uh, uh, an enumeration, something like that. Uh, we call it because yeah, uh, what your application contains is the main question. So your technology stack needs to be correlated with the entire uh, environment, uh, and uh, to start connect the dots basically. Uh, because uh, you can see here, like we are concentrating on service infrastructure, all resources, uh, all staging environment, all uh, environment staging production and acceptance, uh, public and internal uh, domains also. And uh, yeah, you can have here a short uh, snippet of the onboarding uh, process. Uh, this is basically uh, a couple of uh, areas that we are concentrating and we are having queries against it. Um, and we are offering this as a service inside the company, because as I said, we are uh, um, uh, a company of companies and uh, we are serving lots of uh, companies inside the Visma. And all of, this, all of these companies could uh, onboard to our services. Uh, it's voluntary, but uh, if they uh, enumerate uh, also the social uh, media technology stack infrastructure uh, good enough, uh, we will be able to uh, scrap enough information. Uh, so the logic behind it, uh, we've set queries uh, either into our own tools uh, or, uh, or on a platform. Uh, we uh, had a partnership uh, uh, with Recovery Future. So basically, we are uh, into our, our ONOSIN tools uh, for monitoring, especially for the type of squatting. We are uh, uh, monitoring the potential domains that uh, will have some payloads uh, from phishing uh, kits there. So we are monitoring with different uh, own uh, tools, but also uh, we are monitoring with uh, more structured platform uh, 
uh, like recovery feature. So there we have queries, uh, and based on all, all those queries, we set alerts. Uh, so we configure the alerts based on the queries. And all of this uh, goes to the middle tier, which is uh, Ops Genie. And after that, uh, everything uh, comes to, to the Slack, where the first uh, the first triage uh, of alerts, it's ha already happening. So uh, a couple of snippets, what actually uh, we had. Um, you can see here, um, proof that uh, someone uh, posted uh, something about uh, Visma uh, and about one of our uh, uh, application, uh, but uh, it was just a false positive. In uh, all the situations, uh, it was false positive. Uh, one of the big challenges here is uh, with the false positives, because uh, if you're going too broad, you'll get lots of uh, false positives. So you'll need to, uh, to narrow down to the use cases of what you actually need and uh, to start orchestrate what uh, will be valuable. Uh, because these are uh, real proof that uh, we were after a couple of alerts to try those alerts and were false positives. Uh, but all those alerts, uh, so after you, uh, let, let's say after you, your software development team uh, provides you exactly, uh, let's say, the TNAME records, uh, Redis cache, Azure, uh, SQL servers, databases, or even cloud apps and uh, all those stuff. Basically, you watch and listen um, because you have the alerts configured and try to put everything into the context, um, to put the finding into the context. So um, you, you can see here that uh, we have uh, preferences uh, for, for example, the, the link on the Git, it's a false positive because we are on the uh, bug bounty program and we have there uh, uh, a false positive that we're supposed to, uh, to try it. Uh, but of course, uh, we had also quite nasty stuff like uh, on a paste bin, we had uh, some uh, private infrastructure mentioning, uh, also dark web uh, mentions. Uh, most of the times, uh, this I would say that this may sound bad, but considering that Visma probably manages more than 1 million accounts, uh, the probability that one of them will be infected uh, by malware every day, uh, it's, uh, it's pretty high. So uh, we are monitoring the applications and uh, there are usually three main scenarios that needs to be, uh, to be identified. Either, either if it's a user uh, in a Visma, uh, if a Visma employee, uh, this is bad and needs to be acted upon, uh, or uh, it's a user of the customer uh, of the application. This of course bad, but uh, it's not Visma's fault or responsibility if it's providing uh, MFA or 2FA or any kind of uh, multifacting application. Uh, and uh, the third situation is that uh, the user is a previous uh, customer of uh, the company. Uh, usually it's uh, a user, uh, the, the, the user is uh, the customer of the team of the uh, software development uh, product. Uh, and it's not strictly, uh, in, in this case, you, you've seen that uh, uh, it's, it was, uh, not something that we were able to do. We are aware, so we are aware who's uh, hacking what. So just to uh, give a little bit also about uh, what needs to be shared. So for example, for the uh, type of squatting that needs to be acted upon and shared also with the development teams uh, to know what they can expect. Uh, also with dependency confusion, uh, that one, uh, it's a good example uh, how you can spread the word and act upon it to the threat intelligence. Some rules, uh, so uh, CTI uh, concepts and ideas are quite complex. So trying to find the simplicity uh, at the far end of complexity, it's, uh, it's key. Um, and uh, there are a couple of uh, areas here, foundation, business value requirements, critical thinking, uh, concepts, distinctions, and resources. I will not dig into all of this. Uh, I was planning because uh, we are quite a little bit over time, uh, but uh, the foundations basically um, with uh, the CTI, uh, we know that it's, it's a collection uh, and analysis of information about cyber uh, threats and adversaries. So uh, driving the creation uh, of threat models that provides uh, the ability to make uh, 
the knowledgeable decisions uh, is key. Also, business value. Uh, CTI should help uh, business uh, and should help uh, reduce the effectiveness of existing, emerging, and uh, uh, predicted uh, cyber threats. Uh, against the product and the company. And the uh, requirements also uh, should be uh, objectively, timely, and uh, actionable. That's one of the most important things to be actionable. Also, critical thinking is highly important for uh, threat intelligence. Um, uh, and in terms of resources, there are quite a lot. Um, and uh, to summarize, um, so we have, um, we, we, we have seen threat intelligence is surrounded by myths and by buzzwords, but it's important to find uh, our path between uh, these, these wrong ideas. Uh, a threat intelligence provider delivers intelligence that you can consume by different profiles uh, with different uh, expectations. These expectations are supposed to uh, solve various use cases. Uh, the last but not the least, yes, uh, threat intelligence can uh, be a driver for cyber security, uh, cyber security return of investment if the structure cost is measured uh, as part of, uh, of the equation. So uh, the learning uh, path is quite fun because I would see this as an opportunity uh, also in the application world because uh, CTI is lacking at this moment uh, a methodology. It's uh, more like dust in the early beginning. Uh, and I think that it's that's a proper comparison. Uh, and um, in different companies, uh, the threat intelligence is uh, it's shared but uh, hardly used. And uh, from time to time, it's also too, too biased. Um, and also the attribution is difficult, uh, but it's it's one of the most promising concepts. And uh, although the cyber threat intelligence is fairly new, it isn't uh, all different from the traditional intelligence analysis. Uh, so we shouldn't forget the lessons uh, learned from the intelligence community, uh, as they have a lot to teach us, uh, and we don't need to reinvent the wheel. So uh, thank you very much. And if you have questions, uh, I'm available on the, on the Slack after, after the talk.